Hello and welcome to our program. The two Koreas are coordinating their efforts to ease military tensions on the Korean Peninsula as agreed by President Moon Jae-in and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un during their summits in April and September. We'll take a look at the mixed reactions to these latest inter-Korean efforts. But first, here is what we have for you today. On this week's A Road to Peace, we discuss the mixed assessments to recent inter-Korean efforts to reduce military tensions on the Korean Peninsula. We also take a look at North Korean TV coverage on a fish pickling factory, producing a North Korean delicacy. Lastly, we compare the kimchi-making culture between the two Koreas. For today's discussion, we're joined by Kim hyun professor at the Korea National Diplomat Academy. Thanks for joining us again. Thank you very much. On November 20th, North Korea destroyed 10 of its guard posts at the demilitarized zone. And on the 22nd, the two Koreas connected a military road across the DMZ mm. for its joint excavation project. It really looks like the two Koreas are quickly implementing their military agreement. What do you think is the significance of all this? Um, I think uh, they have agreed in the uh, summit meeting uh, about some military agenda. Uh, they had a military agreement how North and South Korea can reduce tensions and do the disarmament measures. Um, of course, so there are a lot of things uh, contained in the agreement, but I think uh, you know one of the important content is to reduce the tensions within the DMZ. Uh, of course, uh, just uh, removing GP guard posts is just uh, initial you know steps. Of course, they have agreed upon. In removing all the guard posts within DMG as an end point, ultimate end point. Um, so I think this is a very uh, important initial step. And also, you know, unlike other things, they have connected the road, as you mentioned, that, uh, which I think is a very uh, symbolic and very important. Of course, uh, you know, North and South Korea can still uh, communicate and, and move to the North and South from the other side uh, through us some uh, roads open already. Uh, they already have uh, opened the roads in the uh, east, east, east coast area and also, uh, you know, the road linking Shinuju and, and Seoul. Uh, but I think this is right in the middle and center of the, uh, you know, demilitarized zone, which is and has been the center place of uh, the warfare, which has been very fierce in the, during the Korean War. Uh, and they are moving, removing the guard coast here and reconnecting the separate roads, which I think is very initial, symbolically important initial steps that would, uh, you know, make two Koreas to be in the middle of peace. But while South Korea has 60 guard posts, North Korea has 160. Do you think it's reasonable to get rid of the same number of guard posts on each side? When you take a look at this, uh, on the surface, maybe it doesn't look like uh, an equal process. Uh, why the same numbers as North has uh, more numbers of guard posts? Uh, but when you look at the uh, you know complete picture of uh, you know demilitarization, you know as I have mentioned in the military agreement, they have agreed upon removing all the guard posts as an ultimate endpoint. And interim process would be that. You know, they would remove uh, all the guard posts that is within one kilometers, you know, across the, uh, you know, military demarcation line. And also as an initial step, they have agreed that they would remove, uh, you know, 10 of guard posts within this month. So this is just a, a one month project, you know, 10 guard posts removal by each side by the end of this month, which means by the end of December. Uh, the reason why they have agreed upon this initial phase is that by doing this and by reconnecting the road that has been severed for, for many years, uh, this would be an important basis for two Koreas to initiate, excavate the remains that have been uh, you know, buried and, and disappeared during the Korean War. So we have to just look at and re read uh, the agreement that they have agreed upon the complete disarmament of each side. Of course, uh, this will take time. Of course, there will be some criticism because North Korea still have a homework to denuclearize themselves. Uh, and until the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, I don't think this uh, military agreement would be completely implemented. This is also something that should be implemented step by step and simultaneously along with North Korea's denuclearization process. 
of course, it's still in the initial stage, but still a lot of critics argue that the recent efforts already made to reduce the military tension could really deeply undermine South Korea's national defense mm. because technically right now the two Koreas are still at war. What's your take on this? That's why I'm saying that uh, they're doing this, uh, you know, not completely before the denuclearization, but along with denuclearization. And also when you look at the military agreement, uh, some of the contents are very, um, you know, inspiring. For example, you know, we have in history witnessed some of the unaccidental, you know, military provocations of North Korea. So uh, North and South in the agreement have made it, made it uh, very clear that they don't want to have military provocation uh, without cautions. They want to make the processes of caution more serious, just remove some of the military weapon systems that can easily make the uh, you know, unexpected uh, military provocations by two sides. So that's the first one. Uh, and second one I think is that, you know, as I have mentioned, they uh, decided to remove the weapon systems within DMZ. And by removing the weapon systems within DMZ, you know, making the area some, you know, places that the people of two Koreas can easily cross, mm -hmm. that would be very symbolically important. Um, and, but, of course, I understand that some of the measures, uh, for example, you know, making uh, the aviation free, mm -hmm. I think that would be something that would be working as an obstacle for the, um, you know, U.S., uh, South Korea uh, military operations in case of emergency or contingency cases. Because when something happens, uh, Air Force uh, aviation is very important right. and they have to go into the, uh, um, you know, military demarcation line and, and sometimes maybe go over to the uh, northern side to take a look at what is going on. That would be some kinds of problems, but I think uh, this would be something that, uh, you know, uh, that can happen in the uh, peacetime. And if a serious contingency happens, I think, uh, you know, two sides would, uh, you know, no more have uh, obligations to keep the uh, agreement, I think. I see. Now, I think a lot of these concerns partially stem from the gap in the military capabilities between the two Koreas. Hmm. Can you tell us more about how big that difference is? You know, there have been a lot of moves in the South to modernize the military capabilities. Uh, I think for now the naval force and air force of the South Korea I think would be uh, already surpassing the North's capabilities. Of course some other capabilities are like uh, the number of soldiers and uh, for example uh, you know chemical and biological weapon systems, um, some other uh, you know rockets for example multiple rockets which have been uh, deployed in the border areas all that kind of things, would be something that uh, no, the North is dominant over the South. I have looked at some of the comparisons of uh, you know, global military capabilities of each country, which have been published by the Global Firepower. And, and I think they have ranked South Korean military capabilities in 2017 as maybe 11th or 12th. Mm, and North average. Korea's capability has been something like a 22, 23. Mm -hmm. Um, so adding to that, U.S. forces along with uh, South Korean uh, military capabilities, uh, I think we have a much higher dominance over the uh, North's capabilities in military sense. Let's now talk about the Kumgangsan Mountain Tours. Recently, a, an event was held to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the Mount Kumgang Tours. Mm. But can you tell us more, our viewers, more about the significance of these tours that were once uh, held in the, in the mountain areas? Uh, Kumgang Mountain Tourism thing has uh, been initiated in, I think, uh, in 1998 uh, when uh, President Kim Dae-jung came in power. Uh, of course, he, he had a summit meeting with uh, Kim Jong-il uh, in, in the year 2000, but still uh, from the initial year, there was a lot of, uh, you, know, you know, works and cooperations and exchanges with the North. Uh, so it l lasted for about 11 years until 2008, in which the Korean uh, female, you know, tourist uh, in Gumgang Mountain area has been, uh, you know, shot to kill. So that event has uh, completely changed uh, the situation, you know, made the uh, tourist, uh, you know, not to go to north at anymore. But the importance of the Gumgang Mountain area was that that began not as a serious exchanges with North, not a, 
uh, economic you know, cooperations or exchanges or infrastructure building, but it was just a you know, simple tourist uh, case. Mm -hmm. But that has been an important initial case that uh, you know, brought a lot of other exchanges between two Koreas. Uh, afterwards, uh, you know, a lot of uh, you know, North, South Korea's investment in North, uh, you know, building a lot of infrastructure in the North, all that kind of things have uh, really been, you know, you know, following after the, uh, you know, Kumgang Mountain area. So I think uh, initial phase and symbolic case, uh, that itself was, I think, uh, the forerunner for all that kind of exchanges between the North and South, I think. Of course, resuming the tours will be good uh, for both sides. But then again, I think North Korea would be much more eager to resume the tours at the mountain because it's been getting a lot of economic benefits when they were still in place. Is that true? Yes, I think so. That itself recently uh, is viewed by the United Nations and the United States as, uh, you know, lifting sanction. Uh, in the uh, September 19th uh, summit meeting between two countries, two, two leaders of the North and South, uh, they have agreed that the normalizing the Kumgang Mountain tourism and Kaesong complex industry, those two things would be normalized under the condition that some conditions would be, you know, settled down, which means that, uh, you know, sanctions north would be lifted, and then these two things would be normalized. Beginning the Gumgang Mountain tourism, it would be only possible when the sanctions on, on north would be lifted. Uh, that's something that South Korea and the United States is talking about right now. Uh, it's only the talks about uh, the, um, you know, common investigation of the, uh, you know, road reconnection between the north and south so and and that's only the exemption of sanctions on that agenda so i i don't think the beginning uh the kumgang mountain tourism i don't think they haven't talked about it anymore that's something that uh the u.s and south korea needs to talk about uh you know again in the future i think so it's going to take some time now we touched upon this a little bit earlier but the u.s expressed a lot of support for the joint inter-korean project on the railways and roads but why do you think the U.S. made such a big turn in its uh, position, and what does it mean for the uh, future of the endocrine projects? Um, maybe U.S. thinks that uh, that's just an initial exemption. Uh, just to, w would like to tr try to be very careful so that this initial exemptions of sanctions in North Korea, limited on the agenda of royal reconnection, would not be spreading out to all other agendas uh, sanctions. Uh, which the U.S. is really worrying about. So I think the U.S. will try to make these uh, exemptions of sanctions to be only limited to the uh, road reconnection between the North and South. Uh, second, uh, this exemption thing clearly shows that uh, President Trump is really eager for a uh, outcome and achievement about the uh, North Korea denuclearization process. Beginning next year, uh, President Trump should be ready for uh, such a harsh harsh uh, pressure by the Democrats. I think uh, when uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un meet some, somewhere, maybe uh, President Trump would be willing to invite you know, Kim Jong-un to Washington, D.C. or Florida in the States, which would be a good place uh, for him to bo you know, boast his uh, right. you know, you know, outcome and achievement. Uh, if that happens, I think uh, a lot of uh, you know, negative uh, criticism within the United States about President Trump would completely change and, and be positive uh, very quickly. So that kind of, uh, you know, uh, after, aftermath is something that I think President Trump wants from the summit meeting. And that's why, you know, uh, he's eager uh, about the uh, summit. And that's why I think he's giving some exemptions about the uh, sanctions on North Korea on the road issues. Well, as always, we're now going to turn into what's actually happening inside North Korea. We will now watch clips from North Korea's KCTV to better understand the country's culture and society. In South Korea, a rice thief means a delicious dish that makes you eat up all of your rice. This week's selected clips feature a North Korean rice thief. Let's take a look. 오늘 취재는 제품 전시실에서부터 시작하기로 했는데 그곳은 이 공장에서 어떤 젓갈 가공품들을 생산하는가 하는 것이 누구나의 첫 번째 관심이기 때문입니다. 야, 제품이 이렇게 많을 줄은 생각 못했습니다. 네, 우리 제품 전시실에는 예. 
15종의 30가지 주갈품들과 간장 네가지를 전시하였습니다. 어, 간장도 생산합니다. 그렇습니다. 공장에서는 곤댕이젓, 까나리젓, 멸치젓, 저게젓, 허두기젓 등 7가지 기본 지표의 생산품 외에도 굴젓, 낙지젓, 새우젓을 비롯한 수십 가지 시제품들을 개발하고 있다고 합니다. 우리 공장은 네. 원료 준비 공정으로부터 포장 내기까지 전 공정에 네. 10명 정도 참가합니다. 10명밖에 안 됩니까? 네, 예. 그렇습니다. 특히 젓갈은 아미노산과 젓산이 풍부하고 광물질, 비타민 등이 많이 들어있어 건강에 매우 좋을 뿐 아니라 발효 과정에 생겨나는 효소들에 의해서 소화제의 역할도 하는 것으로 의해서 김치, 장과 함께 세계적으로도 잘 알려져 있는 건강식품이라고 얘기했습니다. 우리 펑가집 아버지가 평안한 사람이어서 족갈리를 밥시 처합니다. 네. 그래서 이 요명을 해금삼 버특삼을 상점이 나왔다고 하길래 우리를 담아서 이렇게 달려왔습니다. 제가 처음으로 이 상점을 열었을 때 이렇게 곤대의 족갈을 싸가지고 갔었습니다. 네. 근데 저녁 식사에 이렇게 집안 식구들 다 모여서 곤대의 족을 내놓으니까 아니 팬숨에 아야 맛있게 다 여정 내지 않겠습니까? <웃음> 예, 그래서 아 정말 아니 이거 또 와야 되겠구나 이 상점에서 오늘 이렇게 여러 가지 젓갈을 싸려고 지금 또 왔습니다. 이제 이 젓갈 분들이 가닿는 곳그 어디서나 울려 나올 사람들의 기쁨이 넘친 목소리가 막 들려오는 것만 같습니다. 우리는 서해 포구에 보물고 금산포 젓갈 가공 공장에서 더 맛있는 젓갈 가공 품들을 만들어. 우리 민들의 밥상이 웃음꽃을 더 활짝 피워주기를 바라며 공장을 떠났습니다. So North Korea's rice thief was totgal or salted seafood, and the Gumsanpu factory is said to be North Korea's very first fish pickling factory. Can you tell us more about how important seafood is to the North Korean economy? Three major, uh, you know, areas, industry areas that. Is consisting of the major export of North Korea is uh, coal and uh, seafood and textile. UN Security Council resolution has designated these three areas as targets of sanctions. Mm -hmm. So now the North Korea's 90% of North Korea export has been pretty much banned because of uh, they have designated these three areas as the targets of sanctions. So seafood industry is very important. Also, almost I think uh, you know seven or eight percent of uh, North Korea's export to China, mm -hmm. the seafood area. It's very important. This would be good for the North Korean uh, people uh, because uh, there has not been uh, a North Korea's uh, media focus on Chotgal as uh, North Korean people's uh, food uh, uh, style. Uh, and, and the reason that they are kind of doing this and focusing on the variety of their food is that North Korean people hardly starving you know, recently have uh, you know, heard from the uh, people in North Korea that one of the regions that they are uh, you know, escaping from the North is not because they're star starving, but for other regions, welfare and the children's education in Seoul, something like that. So it will also prove that the, uh, the economic welfare situation and the level of economic welfare in the North has been a little bit improved, but recently also I uh, heard that you know, some of the economic situation because of the sanctions has been pretty much fluctuating. Well, we're going to talk more about North Korean food now. Salted seafood makes an excellent side dish, but it's also widely used in kimchi seasoning. Kimjang is the traditional process of making kimchi in South Korea, but interestingly, the kimjang culture can also be found on the other side of the border. Here's more on the story. Kimchi is Korea's traditional fermented dish made of salted vegetables with a variety of seasonings. Almost always served at every meal, it has been a staple of Korean cuisine for centuries. Kimjang refers to the culture of making kimchi before temperatures drop below zero to sustain them through the winter. The tradition, which is common to both Koreas, was listed as a UNESCO intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Kimchi is an indispensable part of the diet for both South and North Koreans. What kimchi varieties are available in the North and how are they made? South Koreans usually make kimchi around this time of the year, but North Koreans start about a month earlier. 
그럼 김치국은 10월에. 그러니까 빨리 춥지 않아요. 그러니까 10월 말 이때쯤 김치 틀어 다, 다 김치 다 끝나요. 그러니까 12월부터는 김치가 먹지. In North Korea, it has been a bad year for Napa cabbage harvest. How did it affect this year's Kim j o n g 올해는 배추값이 엄청 비쌌대. 지난해 가을에 어, 한 천, 천오백 정도를 했다면 올해는 오천 원을 했대. 일 킬로에. 그러니까 뭐 보통은 북한 주민들이 김치를 몇 포기가 아니라 뭐일 톤, 몇백 킬로를 이렇게 해야 되는데 올해는 이백 킬로밖에 못했다고 이제. North Koreans must rely on kimchi to get through the long winter months in a country where food resources are scarce. The dish is called half year's worth of food, and kimchi making is known as a battle. 그 기간에는 정말 전투를 한다는 그, 그 마음으로 부지런해야 돼요. 그러니까 또 추위가 닥치면 배추가 얼거나 뭐 무가 얼면 김장이 이제 그 맛을 살릴 수 없잖아요. 그러니까 얼기 전에도 해야 되고 김장이 끝난 다음에도 뭔가를 또 해야 되는 그 부차적인 일들이 많기 때문에 정말 전투를 할 정도로 빨리 해야 되는 그러기 때문에 주민들이 전투라는 말을 잘 쓰죠. There are different kinds of kimchi based on where they are made. In the southern regions where the climate is relatively warm, a generous seasoning of salt and salted seafood is used to lengthen storability. On the other hand, the northern regions use less seasoning to bring out the natural flavor of the ingredients. 한국에 비하면 엄청 양념을 적게 넣는 거죠. 그리고 어좀 심심하게 대부분 김치를 하거든요. 한국 김치는 좀 짜요. Another feature of North Korean kimchi is that it comes in more diverse varieties compared to its South Korean counterpart, which mostly centers on napa cabbage and radish base recipes. Some of the signature North Korean kimchi varieties unique to each region are Pyongyang's d o n g c h i m i or radish water kimchi, Kaesong's b u s a m or wrapped kimchi, Hamgyong Province's p a l a k and bean sprout kimchi, and Yangon Province's cabbage and mustard leaf kimchi. Among them, cabbage kimchi is a winter speciality enjoyed in the mountainous Yangon Province. To make cabbage kimchi, you need to first immerse cabbage in brine for a while, place seasoning in the cabbage leaf, and roll it up. We are in Japan, so it's not too hot. But Yangon is too hot, so it's too hot. So it's too hot. North Korea Central TV shared a recipe for p o l i t kimchi ahead of the country's Kimjang season. 명태를 넣으면 무를 유연하게 해주고 쫑가면서도 달큰한 김치의 독특한 맛을 더욱 돋궈줄 수 있습니다. Widely available in Hamgyong Province, where p o l a k are easily caught, p o l a k kimchi gives hints of savory fish taste. 다른 건 젓갈을 넣으면 내가 좀 후에 이거 이거 가는 과정이 막 톱톱하고 이런 맛이 나지만 명태는 그런 맛이 없어요. 시원해요. Meanwhile, the kimchi culture is seeing a change as North Koreans are moving towards more convenient lifestyles. In the South, packaged kimchi products are readily available to consumers who prefer to buy kimchi instead of making it. In the North, the r y u g y o n g Kimchi Factory located in Pyongyang started its operations in January last year. is now producing some 70 types of kimchi products. Kimchi factories can also be found outside the capital city. 최근에는 지역에도 김치 공장이 많은데 아마 김정은 위원장 등장해서 인민 생활을 좀 이렇게 살핀다 뭐 그런 이미지가 좀 강하게 이제 주입이 되면서 일단 북한 평양시 주민들만 챙겨 가던 예전의 모습하고는 좀 다른 거여서 보는 마음이 조금 좋기도 했었는데 지역별로 김치 공장들이 생겨나고 있죠. 지금. Viewed as part of the identity of Koreans, the iconic pickled vegetable dish continues to please the palates of South and North Koreans. So the recipes and timing of Kim Jang are a little bit different between the two Koreas, but then again, they share a similar tradition of making kimchi. It's very interesting. Yes, Kimjang, the, the making kimchi in North is a little bit different because it's a very cold weather in, in the North. 
Uh, so whether they use uh, sugar for fermenting and, and making kimchi. Uh, so maybe a little bit different flavor. Uh, you know, South Korean kimchi is kind of, uh, you know, a little bit salty and right, spicy. Right. But I don't know, I haven't tasted uh, North Korean kimchi, but because they have used sugar, maybe a little bit softer and, mm. and maybe a little bit sweeter. Well, Professor, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. The Kimjang culture is yet another example that illustrates South and North Koreans are of one race. It looks like North Korean style kimchi should be added to the food bucket list along with cold noodles. But this is all we have for you today. We'll be back next week. Thanks for watching.